car journeys, for example, yeah, okay. or, you know, so you can get all types. A um, few tips, I suppose, for the whole training thing. My sense is that if they're ready, you can do it in a week. Um, so potty training, really? yeah, when, when kids are really ready, they will be trained within a week. It only takes a few days and you'll have, you know, you, you won't necessarily even have too many accidents in that week. How do you determine if he or she is ready? That's the trick of it because they start sh showing signs, but you know, like in my, even in my own experience, the signs were there. We tried and then we had to give up for a little while and, um, and then when we did do it, it was, it was much easier. And, but that was several months later. Um, so I suppose I have heard of children in this country being trained before their two years, but that's unusual. Mostly it happens somewhere between two and three, kind of around average two and a half for girls, average maybe three for boys. And I think for what often happens, because boys are a bit later in it, and um, what often happens is that... As when, they are in most things, it seems. Yeah, mm. yeah. They just, you know, we're, let's face it. I, know, I mean, we're, we're just... The we're the slower sex. <laughs> Um, but I think what often happens at three is that if, if nothing has happened at that stage, parents are like, come on, <laughs> I'm getting you out of these nappies. Okay, but let me ask you, is there the danger because I suppose we either read uh, books on potty training, we talk to our peers, so we yeah. go, well, what age was yours at? Yeah, you know, yeah. And that thing of kind of prescript, being prescriptive, prescriptive about it and sort of saying, okay, right, here she, she's two, that's it, I'm starting today without yeah. necessarily looking for the signs. I think if you start, well, I know that if you start too early and before a child is ready, you will be doing it for a long time. Yeah. And so you do hear of parents who are trying to potty train for a full year or for months and months. Now, for me, I'd, I'd find that quite difficult. It's not very practical. If you're full time at home, mum, you know, then then maybe. But if you have other kids to mind, then no, you know, it just doesn't work for anybody. Um, so, you know, sometimes people will have maybe false starts as well. You've got it. There's a lot of factors to take into account. Okay, some of the some of the signs that a child is ready, they need to be able to tell you at least that they have just done something, particularly a dirty, you know, they have that they have a dirty nappy, they, that they've done a poo. Some Sometimes they should be able to tell you that they're, you know, kind of ready to do it or that they're doing it. Um, some children will tell you that they have a wet nappy, but a lot of children won't mind running around in a wet nappy for a while. If you've got both of those signs ready, then your child, you know, knows well when, when they're soiling. Um, other things like they need to be able to pull up and they're their pants kind of thing, you know, they're, they're, so even their, their motor movements need to be at a stage where they can pull up their own pants. It's just to be able to, you know, to, to sit up and down on the potty and to climb up or down onto the little toilet seat. Yeah, that's another option. If you, um, you don't actually have to go straight onto a potty, you can go straight onto the toilet by using the little toilet seats and a step. Um, so, so there are various signs that, that a child is ready. Sometimes they will ask about it. They'll be showing an interest in the potty or in the toilet. They'll be talking about, you know, big girls, nickies or big boys pants or whatever. Um, and I, know I would talk, you know, as I would start those conversations before you actually do the, do the job itself. Um, the other thing that I would do is to bring your child to the toilet. Now, for a lot of mothers, that is, you know, an absolute reality anyway, that you yeah. cannot pee you on your own. You can't leave them. Um, yeah. You have an audience of one, two or three, depending on how many kids you have. But, you know, for some parents, that's quite difficult. They like to have the door closed when they go. Y your children need to be able to see you peeing. They need to see the process. And you can break it down into steps. First, we pull down our pants. Then we sit on the toilet. Then we do our pee pee or our wee wee or whatever you like to call it. Um, dry, dry a bum. And then we pull up our nickies. And then we wash our hands and dry your hands. So there's a little process about it. And if you kind of repeat the few little steps each time, they get used to this is this is the little pattern. It's a little routine. So they can start to predict the routine. It becomes like a safe little predictable routine before they even go through it for themselves. Um, so, yeah, when they are ready, um, I would re remove the nappy for the day at least, um, you know, for several days, um, put on the pants, um, explain the whole process to them, Go with the, 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 the potty or the toilet. Um, you will have to check with them. I, do you need to go to the toilet now? Do you need to go to the toilet now at the beginning? Yeah. Um, if they haven't gone, you don't want to be nagging or at you them can all get the day. four-year-old older brother who sniffs yeah. other people's <laughs> bones to let you know. <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> he could he could get a job. He could be yeah. hired. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you will have to check, but you don't want to be nagging at them either. Are you sure you don't need to go to the toilet all the time? Because 
that's going to turn them off. Um, but until they're ready to tell you, you, you know, and there's going to be little accidents where they kind of tell you as they're doing as it. As they're doing it, sure. Um, so you need to be ready to deal with that very calmly. You know, leggings are the way to go or elastic pants to just pull up and down. Um, at, at night time then is often quite a separate thing. So a lot of kids do daytime training and they don't do nighttime training for quite a time. There are some children who do the two together, but it's quite all right to have Nikki's on and be doing the toilet training during the day and still have maybe pull ups or a nappy at night um, and, and do that quite separately, depending on how you're getting on. Um, we so have a related question, kind of well, it is really, it's uh, about a five year old who still wets the bed. No problem weeing if if David, the father, lives him at night, but if he leaves him there, it's just another wet bed. And was just wondering, what age should they be expecting their child to stop bedwetting? Well, really, you know, I suppose generally, if they're nighttime trained, it would happen around three, between three and four, or between two and four. Right. Um, so if they're five and they're wetting the bed, they are a bed wetter. It's almost like a different category. It's okay, like they're, you okay. know. Um, so a certain percentage of kids will be bed wetters or will wet the bed. Um, there's a useful website actually, bedwetting.ie, that gives you the information in the Irish context. Um, a, st a study was done recently by rollercoaster.ie and they found, they were asking, you know, parents, they found that 58% of respondents had a child who wet the bed who was over five. Um, had, a, had a child who wet the bed at least once a week and, and probably more often. Some kids will wet every night. So there's a whole list of reasons as to why a child might wet the bed and, you know, it's, it is quite common but right up to age 10 and beyond that it, it, it needs to be seriously looked at. But um, a GP is always a good port of call. Make sure that there's no medical reason or any particular condition or anything like that for any reason for why they're, they're wetting the bed. Once that's been ruled out, then what people normally do, and it's not necessarily the, the best thing to do, is the night, night lifting is one way of dealing with it. So you kind of prevent it happening. Um, how, it's, but it's it might difficult be, to know if it happens, you know. Sorry, Seth. It's difficult to know if it's happening. Yeah, well, unless you kind of go in. Well, I suppose if you go in and you lift your child at eleven every night, you might you might prevent notice it. it. Then. And then okay, if you, sorry, yeah. you prevent it happening, and then yeah. if you don't lift them, you have a wet bed in the morning. I think yeah. that's what this dad is saying. Okay. Um, so maybe try kind of talking to your child during the day and keeping a, a diary of wet nights and, and dry nights, and having maybe a reward system or a star chart for dry nights and praising them for it and kind of building them up. Um, now make sure you don't do the opposite. As in, there's no there shouldn't ever be any giving out or crossness or anything if they do at the bed because they're not in control of it they're asleep yeah. um don't you know? Definitely limit drinks after six p.m. But during the day, make sure they get plenty of food, fluid, um, and so they, that way they also get used to having a full, full bladder and kind of knowing that they have to go they to the to toilet it, yeah. as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'd, we're running out of time. So just to direct you towards that website, bedwetting.ie, um, and towards your GP. All right, uh, Neve Hannan, thanks very much. Here's Tara with the news. Thank you, Fiona. Well, the VHI will have to be ready.